Well, NATO's potential expansion, uh, also the focus at the World Economic Forum in Davos. The military alliance's secretary general says Russian President Vladimir Putin not only failed to achieve his strategic goals in Ukraine, but also pushed Finland and Sweden to sign up. Finland and Sweden's decision to apply for NATO membership is historic. It demonstrates that European security will not be dictated by violence and intimidation. All allies agree that NATO enlargement has been a great success, spreading freedom and democracy across Europe. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen also spoke in Davos, saying Ukraine must defeat Russia. She also accused Moscow of using food security as a weapon. Ukraine must win this war. And Putin's aggression must be a strategic failure. So we will do everything we can to help Ukrainians prevail and retake the future into their hands. For more, Brandon Tenota joins us live from Davos, Switzerland. Brandon, we heard uh, Ms. von der Leyen's comments on the war, but she also spoke of uh, what happens after the war, laying out plans to reconstruct Ukraine uh, then. Tell us more. That's right now, von der Leyen told the Vos that no stone should be left unturned and that Russian assets frozen overseas could be used to fund the reconstruction of Ukraine. Now, she points out that what Ukraine needs the most right now is direct budget support. And this is why the European Commission is proposing a 9 billion euro financial assistance package. Now, she also adds that multinational institutions or any country that cares about Ukraine should contribute where possible. And in a post-speech discussion, she was also asked whether Ukraine could actually find its way back into the international community. If Russia finds its way back to democracy, the rule of law, the respect for the international rules-based order, then it's a clear yes, because Russia is our neighbor. Russia will stay there. Our standing up against this brutal invasion is standing up against the leadership in Russia. It is the Russian people who are the ones who decide about the future of their country. They have it in their hands. That's right now, Stoltenberg also. That's right now, Stoltenberg also warned Europe not to trade long-term economic, uh, not to trade long-term security needs for short-term economic interests. Or, in his own words, that freedom is more important than free trade, and that the protection of values is more important than profit. And this is where he points out that some countries are over reliant on Russia. For energy needs. And this is where he also notes that, you know, he acknowledges that international trade has indeed, no doubt, brought about great prosperity. But he also warns and uh, warns and also urges economies to actually recognize that some of these economic choices that they make may have consequences for their security. All right, Brandon Tanoto, with those uh, developments uh, out of Davos, thank you. U.S. climate envoy John Kerry also speaking at Davos, again outlining risks facing our planet, including warming oceans, air pollution and extreme weather events. Mr. Kerry spoke on a panel that included his Chinese counterpart, Xie Chenhua. He says the U.S. and China must lead efforts to reduce fossil fuel consumption and cut greenhouse gas emissions, thereby putting a lid on rising temperatures. I am absolutely convinced we will get to a low-carbon, no-carbon economy on this planet. I cannot tell you I'm convinced that we will get there in time. That we will do what the scientists told us we must do four years ago, which was 
reduced by 45% minimum over the next 12 years. We've lost four of those years, and you all know why. We're dealing with a crisis here, folks, that's a crisis made by human beings, and this can be solved.